boys, there's only one way to get that fella, and that is to trail him. He's got a fast horse and we can't catch him. So you fellas go back to town and I'll take his trail and stay with it until I get him. Well, whatever you say, Sheriff. All right, adios. Okay, Chief. Harris, you finally got mixed up with Uncle Sam, didn't you? Well, I was broke, and I knew you wouldn't hold up the stagecoach to pull a federal job, so I took a chance as a lone hand. So you wore a checkered scarf, so they would think I, the Apache kid, did the trick. Now, Buck, you know we agreed not to operate in this district. To protect this hideout. Now, why do you double-cross me that way? <laughs> so that's the gag, eh? My old partner in crime. He's gonna go the straight and narrow road, I suppose. That's <laughs> just what I intend to do. I'm tired of this racket, and I'm going to try to redeem myself and prove that my lesson may be lasting. Can you beat this for luck? This letter's for me. Yeah? Why, it must have followed me all over the country. It'd be a very interesting letter, then. What got into you anyhow? If you were so honest about Uncle Sam's mail, why did you open that letter? Uh, listen, if you're worrying about your old woman, you might as well forget it. Because if she was any good, she would never worry about the likes of you. Now you listen to me, Buck. You keep my mother's name out of your filthy mouth. Or I'll close it for you. Yeah? You and how many? going to deliver it back to the express company, you understand? Now hurry up. Go on, pick it up.
I got you, Apache. And this time with the good. You're wrong, Sheriff. I'm not the Apache kid. He just beat it. Come on, get up out there. Well, if you're not the Apache kid, who are you? Where did he come from? And where is he drifting to? Who? Oh. He's no Indian, Sheriff. He is raised over here near the Apache Reservation. He's probably on his way to his old stomping ground right now. Well, there's no time for talk. Come on, let's get going. Now here, Sheriff, suppose I help you capture this bandit and bring him to justice. Will you see that I get out of all this mix-up? I'll not guarantee you anything except this. I'll see that you'll not hang the no-telegraph pole. Say, Sheriff, I just read a letter from his sister telling that his mother was very sick. I know that's where he's headed for. And if you'll let me, I can lead you right to the place. I, uh, how far is it over that place? Oh, it's a nice ride. We can be there by sunup, all right. You have a sunup, huh? All right. Let's get going and get over there. There's the place, Sheriff. And that's the place where he was raised. And if he ain't there now, he'll be there right smartly. Yeah? Well, let me tell you, we'll camp right here until he shows up. And when he does, we'll grab him. I'll do what I can to help you. See that, Sheriff? There's your man. I think I've proven myself a man of my word. But be careful. He's quicker than chain lightning. Hey, listen. Yeah? You go over back to the shack and get in a conversation with him. He knows you, and he knows that you're unarmed. Understand? I'll come up back of you and get the drop on him. Well, I just don't like that idea, Sheriff. What's the matter? You got cold feet? Well, I'll tell you. He and I, we just don't... Well, we just don't hitch somehow. Hey, listen. You're my prisoner now, and you'll do as I'd say. Come on, get going. I have no gun. I'm unarmed. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you. Kid, I'm in trouble. I'm in serious trouble. I thought perhaps you could help me out a little bit. Been holding up stagecoaches again. Well, I'd, I'd hardly admit a thing like that. When I was over across the... Well, I got you covered. Pick them up. Get up here, Sheriff. Come on here, Sheriff. Get up. You're not hurt. Get up here. Come on here, Sheriff. Get up. You're not hurt. Get up here. Hurry up. Make it snappy. I'm sorry to have to take your artillery, Sheriff, but I assure you it will be returned. Listen, stranger, you're pulling something you're going to be sorry of. And for you, Buck Harris, if we ever meet again, you better start shooting first. Yeah, well, I usually do. You don't have to remind me of it. So long, boys. Adios. Well, you got away with that one. But you'll come back with this one. Come on now, let's get to our horses, make it snappy. And you stick too close to me, too, you understand? Okay, sir. Well, let's be going. Oh. 
He ain't got a chance of getting away. The bridge is washed out. We got him trapped right where we want him. Come on, let's go. Now listen, Sheriff. I know that fox. He's going to double back on his tracks. And when he does, I'll be right here to get him. Well, then you stay here until I bring him back. those steers over in the ravine. All right, Jim. Ted, I've been doing a lot of wondering the last two weeks. I can't figure out why your old man cut off your spending money the very day you broke the news to him that you were going to marry Jane. It strikes me as being very peculiar. Well, I know it does seem funny, Jim, but, well, I don't mind the spending money so much, but, well, not being able to give Jane a little present on her birthday, you know, makes it pretty tough. I'd sure like to help you, but I'm as flat as a pancake, too. You know, old man Wilson hasn't paid a cent for the last two weeks. Say, Ted, I got a nice checkered scarf here that a girl might like. I know men never cared very much for it, but I want you to take it and make Jane a present of it. That sure is great of you, Jim. But are you sure you won't be needing it anymore? No, Ted. I'll not be using it anymore, and it's yours for the asking. Well, thanks. You know, that's a dandy. How are you girls today? Good morning. Uh, Jane, uh, have you seen my son Ted this morning? Why, yes. Uh, he and the new cowhand are bringing in a new bunch of longhorns. Oh, isn't that lovely? <coughs> I must say that you're looking very sweet and charming this morning. Oh, you'll pardon us, Mr. Conway, but uh, we have to go back to the ranch. Dad's waiting for his mail. Oh, now, isn't that wonderful? Uh, by the by, I have an appointment with your father, so if you don't mind, I'll ride over with you. Oh, but, uh, but, but we have some things we have to do first. Uh, uh, it, they're, they're very important. Come on, Sally. She'll get rid of me like that, huh? I guess not. I'll just follow her anyway. Come on, Sally. Let's hurry before Mr. Conway follows us.
Howdy, Wilson. Well, how are you, Conway? What can I do for you? I would like to have a little talk with you. Not here, please. You know what you're oh, telling me, Sarah? So I can't get in here. So, uh, oh, that's so fair, Ken. Now, listen, if you don't keep still, I'm going to kiss you, too. No, you won't. Oh, yeah, won't I, Jane? You yes, bet. Yes, I will. Yes, yes, I, yes I will. The fact is, uh, I have a confession I want to make to you. A confession? Yes. I mean that Ted Conway is not my son. Orphan picked up on the plains after an Indian attack. If what you say be true, Mr. Conway, and I must believe the evidence of your own lips, you must realize that all thought of a marriage between my daughter and Ted is utterly impossible. I wonder where Jim is. Why, I don't know. He was here just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Why, he must have dropped right out of sight. Well, I thought you would say that. I would say the same thing if I were in your boots. That's a pity, too. I'm very, very sorry about that. For I had absolutely decided to settle a very large sum on the young bride. In view of the fact that her marriage to my son is entirely out of the question, she will marry me. I will settle ten times the amount on her that I intended settling on her had she married my son. And you can invest the money in any way that you see fit. Furthermore, I will destroy those personal notes that I hold against you. And you know, Wilson, what that would mean to you, don't you? All right now, Wilson, what do you say? Do I get her? Yes or no? Well... Hello, Dad. Hello, oh, boss. Not Son, right. I'd like to have you ride back to town with me. I have a very important talk that I want to have with you. Why, uh, Dad, I'm very busy, and uh, can we put off of some other time? No, it's imperative that you should go now. Well, uh, say. Hi. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sally. Hi, Jane. Adios. Goodbye. Well, where did you come from? I've been putting a little hay in the feed rack. Where's Ted going? Ted and his dad are going to town. Did he say when he'd be back? Oh, he'll be right back. He's going to wipe the dishes. Well, can I help you with the dishes? Well, you might put them away. Well, that's fair enough. Before I announce my engagement to Jane, I'm awfully sorry, my boy. You know, I did everything in the world I could for you. I, I even offered to settle a large sum of money upon the young lady. Well, nevertheless, I'm going over to the ranch and find out from Mr. Wilson's own lips whether or not I may call on Jane. No, 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 that won't do you any good, Ted. Old Wilson has placed an armed guard around the ranch with instructions to keep you off. Now, now, listen, Ted, my boy. Go on, forget all about this girl, and here, I'll give you... Uh, a nice lot of money, and you can go out and have a good time. Forget all about it. What? Keep your filthy money. How would you girls like to see Starlight do a few tricks? Oh, we'd love to. What can he do? You'll just have to wait and see. Starlight, here, get ready now, boy.
Oh, Jane, will you come here a moment, please? Yes, Dad. Jane? Less than one hour ago, King Conway told me that Ted is not his son. He was a foundling picked up in the wreck of a wagon train. And for that reason, I have called off the marriage between you and Ted. I don't believe it. And furthermore, I refuse to give up Ted. thousand bucks dead or alive. That'll sure be worth time. Well, I just got a report from the Fed. He's around here and we want to watch for it. Well, I'm going to do some you. high riding. Hey, boys, well, looks like we're going to have to get to do some riding. Five thousand dead or alive. Five thousand. Jim, why don't you and I capture this Apache kid and collect the reward? I don't think we'd have much trouble in capturing him, but what would we do with all the money? Well, I'll buy a new horse. Well, what's the matter with Starlight? Oh, he's all right. <laughs> well, Sally, I think we'd better go looking for Ted. All right, Jim. <laughs> well, hello, Jim. What are you doing here? Well, just the boy we were looking for. Say, hey, Ted, I want to talk to you around the corner. All right, Jim. <laughs> Jane wanted us to tell you not to worry. And she wants you to get in touch with her as soon as possible. Well, thanks very much, Jim. But, well, I suppose you've heard all about it. Dad disinherited me so he could have Jane for himself. <laughs> Why, listen, Ted, do you think for one minute that Jane would give Mr. Conway the second look? Why, that's ridiculous. Of course he wouldn't. You know better than that, Ted. Well, say, I wonder if you folks will excuse me. I have some very important business I want to attend to, and, and well, and say, would you please tell Jane that I'll be down to the ranch to see her just as soon as I can? Okay, uh, Ted. All right. He doesn't care that awfully funny. Oh, he's just a little worried. Come on, Sally, let's you and I ride back to the ranch. All Now, now, why all the tears? I'm worried over Ted. Why, Ted can take care of himself. I hope so. Where's your dad? Dad's down at the barn. Has he said anything more about Mr. Conway? I believe Dad's a little ashamed of himself. One moment he does something, and the next moment he's sorry for it. I just don't know how to figure him out. Say, Jane, 
How much did your dad owe Mr. Conway? A great deal. More, perhaps, than any of us could raise. Well, I'm sorry to see you folks in this mess. And I would like to help you in any way that I can. Thanks for your offer. But I'm afraid the amount Dad owes would be impossible for you to raise. To me now, yes. But perhaps the Apache kid might help. Jim, you act just like you know the Apache kid. Well, you know there's a big reward out for him. And I have a hunch I can capture that fellow. And I bet you could too, Jim. Charlie? Hello, Charlie. Stagecoach was held up down in Red Rock Canyon. What? Say, you was driving, wasn't you, Joe? Yes, sir. All right, tell me about it. I was held up by the Apache kid. And I huh? could tell by the checkered scarf that he wore. He didn't harm any of the passengers, but he took the money, the box with your money in it. Took my money, huh? Yes, sir. And Bob here says that it was your son. What? I, I seen him open the strong box and put it in his saddlebag and ride off. Wait, I, I had a gun after the... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute there. How do you know it's my son, Ted? I know Ted well. Charlie, as deputy sheriff, I want you to ride out to old Wilson's ranch. Most likely, that's where you're going to find him. Son or no son, I want you to bring him in. All right, Mr. Conway, I'll get on my way. All right. Listen here. You said it was Ted and you're sure of it, huh? I can swear to it. Mm -hmm. Jane. Dad, yeah. well, where have you been? Well, I've just been in town. I told you you didn't have to worry about him. Why, well, certainly, was you worrying about me? You know, I can't understand, Jane, why your father should object to me now. I can't either, Ted. Now listen, Ted, hold your own and don't weaken. Ted, I've been blind. And today, my eyes have been opened to the temptations I've had, the wrongs I've done, and the suffering I have caused others. I have learned to love justice. And all I want is, is the chance to redeem myself and show that my lesson has been sincere. I'm sure glad you feel that way about it, Mr. Wilson. Thanks, boy. Dad! Why, Dad, that's the first smile I've seen on your face for months. Don't you smile when you're happy? I surely do. I hate the door, Pard. But I'm renting you on suspicion of impersonating the Apache kid to hold up the stage. Why? Why? Sheriff, why? Why, I was no place around when the stagecoach was held up. What? Well, honest, I wasn't. And besides, you, you can't arrest me without a warrant anyhow. Oh, I can't, can't I? No, you can't. Not if I got anything to say about it. Well, I am. And you can't help him. You keep out of this, or I'm going to take you along, too. All right, Sheriff. I'm not calling your bluff now. Ah, there we are. Just the evidence I've been looking for. Why, Ted, isn't that the scarf you bought downtown yesterday? 
For Jane's birthday? Why, yes. Why, yes, Sheriff. I bought that for Jane. I'm going to give it to her tomorrow. Oh, here now. That same old stuff. Better tell that to the judge. Now, come on. We'll take a ride into town. Your friends here can take care of you later. Oh, there, there, dear. Don't cry. Don't cry, dear. I know you're not asking me for any help now, but I think an alibi can be established for Ted. And I'm going into town and see what I can do now. Thanks, Jim. You've been a true and loyal friend. And I don't know what we can do to show our appreciation. Jane, I usually work on hunches. And you leave the rest to me. together with a checkered scarf is evidence enough that unless he can establish a pretty good alibi, I'm afraid this land will go pretty tough with him. I understand that, Deputy. Well, if you fellas have something you'd like to say to each other, I can step out for a few minutes. Thanks. Sit down, Ted. Talk this over. Where'd you hide that money, Ted? What money? You know what I mean. Well, why accuse me of that? When you know the real Apache kid is operating in this territory. Ted? I'm the real Apache kid. I can't take time to explain it to you now. But if you want me to help you, kid, you would never have tried to impersonate him. And in a way, I feel responsible. Now, I'm going to try to prove an alibi for you with the understanding that you will go straight from now on. Jim, I give you my word of honor. And I won't betray you this time. Okay, Ted. Now tell me, where did you hide the money? You know the hollow oak near the dark canyon road? Why well, would you boys have time enough? Sure have, uh, Deputy. Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, Jim. Hi, right, stranger. gentlemen. It looks like my son is guilty, all right. Every indication points that way. Well, I would drop the charges against him if I could get my money back. Yes, sir. The boys are out trying to find out where he hid the money now. I hope they find it. You know... I'm calling a patchy kid, boys. And I'm tough. And if you don't think I'm not, just call my blood. Now, see him up. Keep him high, you pot-bellied coyote. Come on now. Why don't you move? You, come over here and turn around. All right, that's enough. Now you, 
Mr. Baker? Yes, sir. I want to make a little deposit in your bank. Yes, sir. And I want you to take mighty good care of it. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. And remember, it's your own money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do get over there. Get over there, you cradle snatcher. Hurry up. Yes, sir. Oh, please, Mr. Uh, Apache Kid, please don't take those papers. They're just a couple of personal notes. They'll be worthless to you, but they mean a very great deal to me. Now, please don't take them, will you? I'll make sure they're worthless. And I'm sure sorry to spoil your little game. But I'm here to prove that the boy you got locked in jail is not the Apache Kid. What? Now, you two eggs, get over here. Hurry up. Yes, sir. You, you hot belly cradle snatcher. Yes, sir. My final warning to you is that boy better be out of jail when I return to town. If he's not, I'll break your neck. I promise you that he'll be out of jail just as soon as I can get to the sherry. Yep, my money's all there. Don't stand there. Go on and get the sheriff. Get out of here. Go get the sheriff while I lock up the money. I'll get him myself. <laughs> hey, Sheriff! 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 I, I just been held up by the Apache kid. There he goes. Don't let him escape. Hey, boy. Yes. The Apache kid just robbed the bank. Now, who wants to ride with me? I want to All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get on your horse. All right, wait a minute, Sheriff. Wait a minute. Before you go, you, you better let Ted out of jail. Because the Apache kid might change his notion and come back here. And if he did, he'd break my neck. Well, don't you worry about that. But I'll let him out. All right. You wait, boys. Let that relieves out. me. Oh, boys. The Sheriff said turn you loose. He did? So, get your lid. Go out and see if you can't help to capture that Apache kid. Well, you bet your life, Deputy. Did you let Ted out? Yes, he's out. That's fine, Sherry Bone. All right, boys, lay to it. Well, let's get it.
The meaning of this. There's your Apache kid, Sheriff. That's the man we're looking for. And how did you do it, Jim? Well, we met, and I fired. I cornered him on top of that cliff. We battled all over the place, and pretty soon, he slipped and fell. Doesn't this clear Ted and let him go free? How about it, boys? You bet. All right. All right. The passing out of the Apache kid is going to serve to keep other desperados out of this district. Shake. You're right, Sheriff. I nearly forgot to say goodbye to my only little sweetheart. Well, Jim, I don't want to see you go. Please don't go. Goodbye, Sally. Goodbye, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> 